In May 2021, Moroccan authorities suddenly lifted border controls with the Spanish enclave of Ceuta. In the days that followed, thousands of migrants desperately tried to make their way into the territory, either by scrambling over the high fence that separates it or by attempting to get there by sea. All this served to highlight the ongoing dispute between Spain and Morocco over this and several other tiny pieces of territory dotted along the Mediterranean Sea. So, what exactly is the dispute all about? And what sparked this latest flare-up in tensions between the two countries? Hello and welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is James Kerr Lindsay, and here I take an informed look at international relations, conflicts, and the origins of countries. While we tend to think of border disputes in rather straightforward terms as a difference between two countries over a joint land boundary, such disputes can in fact take a variety of other forms. In some cases, they can centre on territorial waters and islands. However, a rather more unusual and fascinating type of dispute focuses on enclaves and exclaves. These are pieces of one country's territory that are either entirely located within the territory of another country, an enclave, and or are separated from the main country and have a land border with another state, an exclave. When one of those borders is a sea, they are more properly known as semi-enclaves and semi-exclaves. One of the most interesting border disputes in the world is centred on a series of Spanish holdings in North Africa, including the semi-enclaves of Malia and Ceuta and a series of small islands. Over the decades, they've become a point of friction with neighbouring Morocco, which regards them as occupied territory. While the issues tend to not be a source of day-to-day -day conflict, tensions do sometimes arise. This was seen recently when thousands of migrants suddenly converged on the enclave of Ceuta. So, what is the issue all about? The dispute is centred on the northern coast of Morocco at the western end of the Mediterranean Sea and involves six distinct territories. The two most significant are the Spanish semi-enclaves of Malia and Ceuta, which lie about 200 kilometres from each other. Classed as autonomous cities by Spain and making up two of the 19 main administrative districts of the country, they have around 85,000 inhabitants each. In terms of size, Ceuta is slightly larger than Malia at 18.5 square kilometres as compared to 12.3 square kilometres. Then there are three small territories that contain small military garrisons. Velez de la Gomera, another semi-exclave on the Moroccan mainland, the island of Alhuchemas, and the Chafarinas Islands. Interestingly, Velez should be an island. However, since a storm in 1934 created a land link, it has been attached to Morocco with what's widely considered to be the world's shortest land border at around 80 metres. Finally, there's the tiny uninhabited islet of Perahil, lying just 200 metres from the Moroccan coast, a little to the west of Ceuta. For our purposes, the story really begins with European attempts to gain a foothold in North Africa in the 15th century. In 1415, Ceuta was captured by the Portuguese, eventually passing to Spanish control following the end of the union between Spain and Portugal in 1640. Meanwhile, Malia was conquered by Spanish forces in 1497, Alhuchemas in 1559, and Velez in 1564. In 1668, Spain took control of Perahil. Over the course of the following centuries, Morocco attempted to win back control of the territories. However, in 1860, following a short war, it explicitly recognised Spanish sovereignty over the territories as well as over the Chafarinas Islands, which had been occupied by Spain a decade earlier. Following a decision by France and Spain to carve up Morocco into spheres of influence at the start of the 20th century, in 1912, the two countries formally extended their control over the entire country, with Spain taking control control of the northern coast and a southern strip lying alongside its colonial territory of Spanish Sahara. This would last for almost half a century until Morocco finally regained its independence in 1956. But while Spain ceded sovereignty over most of the areas it had previously controlled in the north, it retained control over Malia, Ceuta and the other territories that it had held before 1912. Although Morocco laid claim to these territories, arguing that they now amounted to occupied land, Spain refused to discuss the question of sovereignty, arguing that their inhabitants were Spanish and that they had been Spanish territory 
even before Morocco formally existed. But despite their differences, in 1991, Spain and Morocco signed a treaty of friendship and cooperation. Under the terms of the agreement, they undertook to settle disputes peacefully and not threaten or use force against the territorial integrity or independence of one another. As a result, while tensions over the territories may have continued to simmer, they rarely boiled over. For example, while in March 1995, Malia and Ceuta were formally designated as autonomous Spanish cities, a decision condemned by Morocco, a planned visit to Malia by the Spanish king in 1997 to mark the 500th anniversary of the conquest of the city was canceled following Moroccan pressure. However, despite their pledge to avoid force, in July 2002, the two countries in fact came dangerously close to war after a Spanish patrol boat spotted a Moroccan flag flying on the islet of Perejil. After a small detachment of Spanish troops sent to investigate was forced to withdraw following a confrontation with armed Moroccans, the situation escalated quickly as Madrid sent special forces troops to retake the islet, capturing six Moroccan soldiers in the process and moved its navy into the area. While Spain insisted that it was acting in self-defence, Morocco accused Madrid of turning a political issue into a military one and that its behaviour amounted to an act of war. In the end, the crisis was diffused by the US Secretary of State, Colin Powell. Following numerous calls, the sides agreed to return to the previous status quo. Tensions would emerge again five years later in 2007 after Spain announced that King Juan Carlos was planning to visit Malia and Ceuta. Following the cancellation of the previous planned visit in the early 1990s, this would be the first such visit to either territory since the start of his reign 30 years earlier in 1975, and the first visit by a Spanish head of state in over 70 years. While Morocco demanded that Spain call off the trip, it nevertheless went ahead, prompting the Moroccan king to call for negotiations over the territories. However, in the years since then, things have seemed to be generally quiet, until now. So, what sparked this latest crisis? Interestingly, it seems as though the roots of the most recent tensions lie on a very different issue, Western Sahara. I won't go into a lot of detail about this as I've covered it in other videos. I put links up above and in the description below. However, the issue centres on Spanish decolonisation of the territory in the mid-1970s. Although the United Nations had decided that Western Sahara should have a right to self-determination, the Moroccan government moved in to seize it. This in turn sparked an insurgency led by the Polisario Front, which led efforts to create an independent Western Saharan state. Although a ceasefire was reached between Morocco and Polisario in 1991, this came to an end in November 2020 when the front resumed its attacks on Moroccan forces. It was against this backdrop that news emerged in April 2021 that the Polisario Front's leader, Brahim Ghali, had been allowed to enter Spain for medical treatment. Although Madrid insisted that the decision was taken for purely humanitarian reasons, Morocco was outraged. After having summoned the Spanish ambassador to the foreign ministry to explain the decision, it announced that there would be repercussions for Spain's actions. It was just a few weeks later, on Monday the 17th of May, that Morocco abruptly lifted its controls on the border with Ceuta. In the days that followed, up to 8,500 migrants from Morocco and other African countries, including hundreds of unaccompanied children and teenagers, began trying to get into the enclave in hopes of being able to make their way into mainland Spain and then the rest of the European Union. While some attempted to scale the six metre high fences that had been set up in 2005 following a previous migrant crisis, many others crowded onto small boats or even tried to swim to get into the territory by sea. Against claims of violence and heavy handedness, Spain quickly reinforced the border and was able to bring the situation under control within a few days. By the end of the week, the vast majority had been sent back into Morocco. However, anywhere between 800 and 1,000 unaccompanied minors still remain in the city of Ceuta, putting major pressures on its resources. Needless to say, Spain reacted angrily to what it saw as a deliberate move by Morocco. The Spanish foreign minister openly condemned Rabat's decision to use migrants as retaliation for Spain's decision on Ghali. Meanwhile, the Spanish Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez, accused Morocco of having shown disrespect to the European Union. At the same time, the European Union's High Representative for Foreign and Security Policy, the EU's Foreign Minister, 
Joseph Borrell, a former Spanish foreign minister, also appeared to signal his displeasure at events, reminding Morocco that Spain's border in Ceuta represented the borders of the European Union. As things stand, the situation now appears to be under control. However, while the immediate crisis appears to be over, both Spain and Morocco have come under heavy criticism by international human rights bodies. Spain has been criticised for its harsh treatment of the migrants and for sending so many back without due process. Meanwhile, Morocco was condemned for using people's lives as pawns in a political game. The recent migrant crisis around Ceuta has once again drawn international attention to the long-standing border dispute between Spain and Morocco. As well as the enclaves of Melilla and Ceuta, this has also focused on a number of other tiny territories that Spain refused to cede to Morocco when the latter became independent in 1956. Of course, the two sides have very different views on the dispute. For Morocco, these territories are seen as last vestiges of a colonial past that should have been given back to it when it regained its statehood. In contrast, Spain argues that the territories were never in fact Moroccan. They belonged to Spain long before Morocco even existed. Moreover, their populations are largely made up of people who consider themselves to be Spanish. Their wish to remain part of Spain should be respected. Of course, few outside observers miss the irony that Spain doesn't hold the same view on the British exclave of Gibraltar, which adjoins mainland Spain and is just 20 kilometres north of Ceuta. This is an issue that I hope to return to in a future video. In any case, as a result, the territories have given rise to occasional bouts of tension. But what makes this latest incident so particularly interesting is that the disputed territories were not the main point of tension this time. Instead, it appears as though they became part of a very different dispute between Spain and Morocco over the Western Sahara. In this sense, it represents a rather interesting and unexpected development in the long-standing dispute between Spain and Morocco over what is, by all accounts, a rather strange collection of territories. I hope you found that useful. If so, here are some more videos that you might find interesting. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.